Well, welcome back to Base Camp, WNC. We're here on my property right now, and this is a spring. As best you can tell, right here is the cement block house. It goes from here, back there. This is a metal piece of metal I put in there for a door, but the spring's inside. I'll try to photograph part of that. But what we're doing here is going to clean this thing out. I've cleaned it out about five years ago. We'll make a little setup as to how this thing was built. This was built in about 1964. And what we have here is camouflage. There's a tree that fell down over top of it. It has a cement floor, cement block wall, and this is a cement roof on it. So it's kind of hidden out of view if you... You look around here, it's kind of, unless you get down in this water that I'm standing in here, you really don't see it. Nobody's ever messed with it, so I kind of leave it alone. So let me get the door apart, and let me take you on this adventure to clean it out. Well, I got the door off, and it's going to be kind of hard to see the back wall. This is part of the back wall, and I'm going to set up a little display of it. It's cement blocks tied on the side so the spring water can come in. This thing is about four by four inside. I have shoveled out all this sediment so far. So now I'm going to go get something to sit on because the outflow pipe to the bottom is like 11 inches deep. And I'm going to crawl in there and hopefully with that little trowel, dig out all the rest of it. Let me uh, go get something else so I can go get good and wet and dirty. The boots ain't going to matter, but let me bring you back. Well, I got the boys. I don't know what it's going to sound like. I might have to talk over it. But here it is. Of course, the water's running in. I shoveled. All this sediment, and I'll get out there and show you how big a pile it is, but what they have is concrete floor. They have one block laid vertical. Then on three sides, they have the block laid horizontal, and that's where all the water runs in. And then, of course, from there on up is walls and a poured concrete ceiling. And the door that I redid and this is the outflow pipe. And this is an inch and a quarter piece of pipe with a one and a quarter to one and a half bushing on it for some unknown reason. So I'm gonna have to come out of this inch and a half bushing, come down, and then I'm gonna build my sediment trap and whatnot right here. I'm gonna take you on that build. But I figured being I crawled in this hole for the last hour and a half, two hours shoveling this dirt out, uh, I'd let you know what it looks like. And let's see, 16, about 32 inches wide, about 48 inches. One, two, three, four, five, six blocks high. So let me get out in the air and take some pictures. Well, I tried the regular filters that I use. And I'll show you down there at the spring. Right now the spring is flowing about six gallons a minute. Uh, this is the dry time of the year. It normally flows about 14, so the filters can't do it. We got too much sediment, as you saw from the pile of dirt we shoveled out. So I built the biggest sediment trap, which is going to be this five-gallon bucket, and we drilled one inch and a quarter hole through the fittings will screw in. I'll show you that, and then we will cover it with this remade fabric, which is just a filter fabric. It's kind of that's actually the stuff you'd put over top like your squash plants to keep the bugs out. And then we will have this inside. It'll also be covered and tied in from one pipe. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll show you what it is. I wanted to show you this before I covered it up. Well, here they are. I got the five gallon bucket, just big rubber bands around it to hold the filter fabric on there right now. Got holes drilled. This is a four inch piece of PVC pipe. And then I screwed a one inch hose barb into here, a one inch hose barb into there. I'm gonna heat this up, slide it on one, heat it up, slide it on the other one in the bucket, and I'll show you what it looks like. Here 
it is. Foul gallon bucket, one inch hose barb coming out. I'm gonna have to hook up. And then what we have here is a one inch female hose barb screwed on the end of the male. One male going into the PVC pipe and a black piece of poly pipe right now over the two just to hook them together. Well, of course, I came out with a hose barb. I put a piece of one inch black poly pipe on it to a one inch hose barb to a two inch one inch pipe thread to a two inch PVC. And this is about two and three eighths outside diameter. The coupling that's down in the spring head is two and a quarter. So I'm gonna to try to get one of them rubber couplings for pipe with two uh, stainless steel screw clamps on it tomorrow when I'm out and get them and we'll go down and try it. Well, there it is. This will be the biggest sediment trap I've ever built. Um, I know right now I don't get anything extra for style points, but um, this is just the Mark I model. We'll go from there and dress it up if it works. We have what will be the outgoing hole. The water, hopefully, will come through the bucket, in the holes, into here, then go into here, filter again, come down through the pipe, out the black one, and come down to the spring box. This is my first prototype. We got rubber bands holding it and some paper clips at the top and tie it off in a knot. We're gonna try to see if this works. If it does, we're gonna go from there and build something a little bit more permanent. Well, I'm regretting doing this thing, but of course when I did all this before, I didn't have this rubber coupling. And now I gotta get in here and stand on my head and go back down and get all wet. I was wet before. It's nice, it's 26 degrees today, so I figured I can't do anything unless it's this cold and nasty. But this, I wanted to show you the pile of dirt that I got out of the bottom of the spring. It's all that right there. And then this pile of dirt I threw over here, trying to keep the spring door open. So let me see if I can pop the lid off of this thing and see if I can't sit my pre-filter down in there and Take the impact driver, tighten it up. Maybe not get soaking wet. Well, here it is. I don't know how well you can see it. There it is, the light come on. That's the pipe coming out. I got the rubber fitting screwed to it into the two inch fitting. And it's filled the bucket up. Working right now, let's see how long it takes to clog it up to where it doesn't flow very good. Let me pull back here and put the lid back on this thing. Maybe seal it up for another five years or something. We'll see how it goes. Well, here's the pipe that comes down from the spring. And after it's been cleaned out, here's the best part of my problem. Here it is, almost November which is September, October is the driest months. And we're still flowing about six gallons a minute right now. During the rest of the year, it flows about 14 gallons a minute. So the regular filters I use won't keep up with it. The whole house filter won't do it. So that's why I'm building this bucket. But I wanted to show you how much water I got. This is a one and a quarter inch pipe. It's not one inch, this is one and a quarter inch pipe. And uh, I've got it unplugged right now because it flows. This is the original setup. Of course, it goes in right there. Let me back you out a little bit. And then it runs into this old tank, circa 1964 when this system was put in. And this used to feed one little house or cabin that was over here. And then the overflow came out and it flowed into this cistern for the one that was the house that was up on the hill that way. So right now I use both of them. I have, I'll go over this tomorrow, but I have both of them hooked together. Both of the overflows hooked together. And then it goes down into my double pump house that's been on the videos before, but I'll show you that again. And that has got a 550 gallons worth of water storage, but then it goes down there. Well, this is 
the overflow line and I captured all the lines going down. So you can see this line here comes from this cistern to this one and then goes out. And this one's overflow that was overflowing. And I don't even quite see it. Let's go down there. I'll, I'll show you the rest from down there. Well, here's what it is. This is the outflow, the overflow of the pipe. This is the outflow because the pump used to suck it out of here. So I use the first one and this second old tank as settling ponds. And then all the water comes down here and runs into the tank. And to keep it on a downhill plane, I put it in this piece of pipe. And what I've got here is a couple of steel fence posts with a quarter inch bolt tied on keep it on a downhill slope so it doesn't have to come up down back and forth do all that kind of stuff and then head into the tanks and this is it it's the water line coming in there's a fitting there that goes into the top of that tank there's a fitting here that comes into this tank and then of course it comes out of this tank this is the overflow and this way we have water going across the surface of it so it doesn't freeze Thermal mass wise, these are 275 gallon totes. We've never had them freeze and we get down to single digits with a lot of wind. Of course, I've had this set up for quite a while. Then I put this one here in and two 275 gallon tanks. So I got 550 gallons of water ready to be pumped at any one particular time. I don't have to worry about it running in or catching up or and it pumps into a 275, 300 gallon tank up at the house. So I never have to worry about running the pump dry or anything else. But if it ever be a help to you, this is what we do. We do water, power, sewer. And I've learned dealing with YouTubes. If you like it and it meant anything to you, give me, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, tell everybody about it, like it, share it, subscribe. But we're getting up to 4,000 people. We just setting the world on fire. Thank you for watching. I'll see you the next time.